Hey viewers, it's Kara, your regular host for Tuesdays, and this is the Pagan Perspective. Our week's topic is gemstones, and before I get started, I would like to say a big thank you for my substitute Tuesday person, Scissors, who filled in for me last week. That was essentially because I didn't have a lot to say. Um, I might do a video later on my personal channel about familiars, because I have more to say about that, because I think I actually do have a familiar. But I really just didn't have a lot to say, and by the time I got back from rehearsal and everything, it was just, eh, it would have taken me forever. So I really, really thank her for picking it up on such short notice and doing a really good job. I really, really liked her video, and I hope you all did too. Now, on to gemstones. First of all, Gemstones are very important to me in my practice, and I love them. I mean, they're pretty, they're fun to collect, sure, but they're also really useful. I especially like crystals and gemstones in jewelry because I think it's one of the best ways to reap the benefits of these stones by wearing them because you can't really keep them any closer to you than wearing them, and it's a lot more convenient than carrying them around in your pocket. Like. Guys, I'm sure, have more uh, accommodating pockets for that sort of thing. You might decide to carry a crystal in your pocket. Not so much for me. So I wear ring. I don't wear a lot of rings. You know, you never really see me with rings on anymore, but it just sort of depends on uh, what kind of mood I'm in and where I'm going if I wear that. But I pretty much always wear necklaces. I was in a show earlier today, so I had no jewelry on, so I didn't feel like putting a necklace on just for this video. Too lazy for that. Don't care. But normally I do have some crystally goodness going on in the neck region. And I make a lot of earrings with crystals in them because I think that's a really cool way to wear them as well. But unfortunately I only have one ear pierced. So I don't wear my own crystal earrings yet. As soon as I re-pierce the other ear though, I will. And of course most of you know I wear my shocker bracelet, which I haven't actually worn this in quite a long time, but I had a dream the other day that basically just screamed to me that my throat chakra needs reopening, and I don't have any lapis on campus with me because I actually don't have, like, any of my crystals here except for the jewelry, so I just threw this on real quick, and as soon as I put this on, I haven't worn it in, like, months because I was afraid it was going to break. As soon as I put it on, I got all tingly, and I just automatically felt like it was making things better, so for the chakra bracelet. I also have crystals that are just plain crystals as well, but like I said, I don't have them here, but I do collect a lot of crystals. When I set up my altar, I like to use crystals like north, south, east, west kind of thing to go along with either the, just purely the directional standpoint, or I like to set them up for uh, whatever specific thing I'm doing. I like to set up crystals around to sort of draw that energy, and thanks to... I believe it was Fanny 12, her crystal grid videos. Yeah, it was Fanny. Um, her crystal grid videos. It has me really into crystal grids now, but again, since I'm at school and they're not here, I haven't gotten to try it yet, but I'm really, really intrigued by the idea of crystal grids to draw the energy of crystals and things like that. I use crystals a lot in meditation and aura healing and energy work and things like that. I really like to meditate with clear quartz. Clear quartz is my favorite probably my favorite crystal ever because it's just so versatile it's just like it's it's an amplifier for everything and like you put it next to anything else and it just amplifies what that other crystal does I mean it's clear you know it's transparent it's really easy to use I mean even just the color and how it is and it's pretty and it's really common and then other favorites would be like others I, I just really like quartz of all sorts I really like uh, smoky quartz, but uh, I would say amethyst, rose quartz. And for meditation purposes, it really just depends on what I'm meditating about, what is my favorite to use, but clear quartz, just for general, if I just need something, I go to clear quartz. If I'm doing energy work and I need something to help me with the flow of energy, it's clear quartz. There are probably things that are better for it, smoky quartz sometimes, uh, pretty much anything in a point or a wand shape is a lot easier to use for that sort of thing. It's easier to direct energy that way, but I do like to match it to what I'm doing. So if I'm specifically doing energy work for love drawing, I'll use a rose quartz point. And besides using crystals, I just really, really like, I was going to say taking care of them, but that sounds kind of weird. Like, it sounds like they're pets, but I, I really like cleansing crystals. I really like cleansing crystals. 
Uh, and I prefer to use the water method of cleansing and stuff like that and running them under water and charging them under the full moon and everything like that. I don't know. I just, I think it's a really easy way to feel energy through a crystal because, I mean, it was formed in the earth if it's a real one and it's, you know, not like some weird imitation nonsense. You know, it's like, it's energy is tangible. You can hold it in your hand. You can feel the vibrations. You can put it on your forehead to help with a headache and depending on whatever stone it is you can place them on the different chakra points in your body for a meditation and you can just physically feel it and it's just so helpful they're pretty straightforward like uh as to like what stone is good for what kind of thing i mean they all have like several things that they're good for but there are definitely like you just know it's just easy when you learn about crystals after a while you just know what's good for a headache, what's good for communication, what's good for remembering things. I don't know, it just seems like a medium that a lot of people can really get into, that's really easy to learn about, and it's memorable. Color associations and things like that, there's just, there's so much to learn about them, and I'm, I'm never going to know everything about every crystal, but it's one of those things where you learn about it as you need it, and then you remember it. I highly recommend working with crystals if you haven't. If you can find them, there was like this gift shop in a town near us that had one of those like little wooden wagon looking things and it has the little tiny velvet like drawstring bags and you could fill it up with how, as many as you could as long as you could still close the bag and it was like a dollar. So it's a really good way to get those if you can find something like that. I think they do those at medieval fairs too. They have like the little thing with the drawstring bags. So that's a really cool way. Or like Kyle said, the rocks and minerals kit or whatever. I've never actually seen those, but that sounds like a really good idea too if you happen to get a hold of those more readily. Go for a walk. If you're in an area that a certain stone is really common, I go to different parks and quartz is pretty common. My little brother has found huge chunks of clear quartz and we have found rose quartz and things like that. I mean, it's mostly quartz because that's mostly what's common around here, but you can. You can find, you can find the crystals, just, you know. And geodes, geodes are so cool too, and they're, there's just a totally different ballpark, in my opinion. So what are your favorite crystals? And what's your favorite way to use them? And does anyone do the, like, crystal, like, tincture thing? I don't know if they still call it a tincture. But, like, when you put a crystal in, in a liquid and you charge it up with the crystal's energy and then you drink it for healing, has anyone done that? I've only, like, read about it. I don't actually know how it works. So if you do that, that's a really interesting thing to talk about. If you don't have a video on that, that's worth it. Do that. If you do that, tell me how. Um, yeah, so I think that's about all I have to say for this week. Thanks again to Scissors for filling in last week. And I can't believe it's already been a week since that. It really does not seem that long. Okay, thank you guys for watching, and I hope I didn't bore you too badly. And I'll see you next Tuesday on this channel, but you can find me on my personal channel pretty often these days. So I will see you around. Thanks for watching, and blessed be. I'm trying to think of what else to say. And I don't know what else to say.